Almighty God, we exalt you, King of Glory. Hey, Namashata, Shata Tata Lila Masata, Mahandele Boshikata, Radadadashia, Inamasi Kataria Basete, Ridadadabashi Karia Basata, Robobo Shikaria Basata, Makataria Basendele Boshete, Ridadadabasho Korobo Sete, Rikataraba Shendele Bosete, Ribaba Bashakata, Rababa Sata, Jekete Riba Shata, Ribaba Sokotorobo Shata, Makatariba Sendele Boshata, Mandele Boshikaria Basata, we worship you, Lord. We worship you this evening. We say you are worthy. You're worthy of praise. You're worthy of the adoration. We love to love you, Jesus. We love to be in your presence. We enjoy being in your presence. The Bible says, in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. In the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. And then again, the word of the Lord says, that same joy is our strength. That the joy of the Lord is our strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Ah, shakatali basata, manda katala basekete, ridararaba shikaria basata. We bless you, Lord. We worship you, mighty God. There is none like you, King of Glory. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It is good to be in the presence of the Lord. Oh, Holy Spirit, we charge up this atmosphere. Lada shikata. Can I please have Psalm 107, verse 20? 107, verse 20. I have it in New King James Version. The Bible says he sent his word. Oh my God. Shakata, the Lord is about to send his word this evening. Amen. And the Bible says he healed them. I don't know what brought you this evening. It could be you need healing in your finances. You need physical healing in your body. You need healing in your mind. As we are in this atmosphere, there are different things that are represented here. We don't, each person here has a unique situation that they're dealing with. But the word of God tells me that God sent his word and it healed them. It didn't specify what it healed. It just said it healed them. Whatever situation is represented here, we're going to pray for the healing of God in whatever it is over your children, over our finances, over our marriage. Anything that is represented here is it you are looking for a job. He sent his word for you this evening. And the Bible says he rescued us uh, from that destruction. Whatever it is that is symbolic of a destruction in our lives. We're going to pray this evening. That as the word of God is released, that we will receive healing. That as the word of God is released, that we will be delivered from any form of destruction. That you may not even see with your physical eyes. Amen. So we're going to intercede this evening. That for those of us that are still coming, that are on their way. That as the word of God is released power that we will encounter the healing that the Lord is telling us in his word for it is written that he sent his word as the man of God is ministering that the word of God will be preached with power and precision that the word of God will be preached undiluted we need the rumor word we need the word of God to be preached raw that as the man of God is preaching that it will preach with power that it will be fresh power from the realm of heaven that everyone who's represented here that you will get your solution as the word of God is preaching a child of God I pray that we do not get familiar with the presence of God that we not get familiar with whoever is ministering this evening but we will see God in them that as the man of God is ministering that they will decrease and God will increase in them that we will not see them that we will not hear them but we will begin to hear God come on church of God let us intercede according to the word of God Lord your word tells us that you sent your word and your word healed us oh God this evening Lord as you are sending your word to us. Your word will declare and confess that your word shall indeed, mighty God, heal us in the mighty name of Jesus, that you will di be distributing solutions to each and every situation that is represented today in this auditorium in the mighty name of Jesus. We intercede for those who will be connecting online as well, that Father, as they connect
let they will receive their miracle that this is the day the Lord has made we shall rejoice and be glad in it this is the day the Lord has made this is our evening of encounter we will encounter Jesus like never before Ah, shakata, ladashikata, ladoshata. we bind every distraction of the enemy that has been released to stand against the word of God we bind every distraction of the enemy that has been released to distract us in the atmosphere Ah, shakotata. we release the angels of God Makata, that no enemy shall steal the word as the word is releasing. No enemy shall re- steal it, oh God. Hey, Lado Shatter. Tonight is our night of deliverance. Tonight is our night of liberty. The Bible says, Whom the Son of God set free is free indeed. Tonight is our night of liberty. Ashakatata, Rado Shatata, Rado Shatata, Rado Shatter. Lord, bring back the power to the house of the Lord. Restore the power to the house of the Lord. Ashata, Lado Shatter, Rada da da shikata shekete we church the atmosphere we church the atmosphere with the power of god era ba shata makata ra ba shokori ya ba sata randele ba shikata ra ba shata manifest your glory oh god this evening manifest your glory manifest your power manifest your glory oh mighty god eh shakata ra da 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 shikata makata ri ba sia jete tete tete rekete le ba shata ra da da speak oh god speak mightily through your seven this evening speak oh god with precision through your seven this evening oh god speak with clarity oh god through your seven this evening oh god distribute solutions this evening distribute business ideas oh god distribute oh god ah shakata ra da 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 rede shakata the bible says silver and gold belongs to the lord ah shakata lado shakata makata ta ra da da release oh god ideas that will allow us to take giant strides hey shakot witty inventions in the name of jesus the bible said to not forget the lord your god for it is he who has given you power as shatter to make what so let the power to make what be distributed in our midst this evening let the power to make what as shakata red 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 about shatter be released in the mighty name of jesus we honor you and we thank you lord and it is in the mighty name of jesus we pray come on give god glory hallelujah praise the lord tonight is your night of your miracle in jesus name
that can we rejoice this evening hallelujah say we are perfect in him hallelujah
your hands, lift up, give him praise. Declare his lordship, declare his sovereignty, his supremacy, that he's the all majestic, marvelous master, the righteous ruling redeemer. Yeah, he's our supreme sovereign savior. Where you are, just, just give him your worship. 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 That at the mention of his name, every knee bows, every tongue confesses. Every knee on earth, under earth, and above the heavens. Even in the heavens from eternity, past, present, and future, the stand and an audience of the Lord. They observe his goodness, his greatness, his might, his beauty, and his power. All of heaven looks to Jesus. All of heaven looks to Jesus. When men say, look to the heavens for your help, heaven itself focuses on Jesus. In Revelation chapter 5, the Bible tells us of John. As he was about to weep, he cries and says, Who can open the scroll and break its seal? After the angel spoke and said that, John was about to weep. But the angel says, Behold the Lamb. Where you are, just below, behold the Lamb. Behold the Lamb. Here's the Lord. Here's the Lord. Here's the Lord. Here unto Mount Zion, O Lord, with no other reason and no other purpose, that is to lift up your holy name. We come in reverence to who you are. You who sits encircled around by the seraphs and the cherubims, who dwells in the realm of unapproachable light. We come here before you, O God, to encounter you. As we have come to encounter you, O God, we ask you that you will manifest and reveal yourself to your people here tonight. And Father God, out of here we will have only one testimony, that Jesus is Lord. That every tongue will leave here confessing that Jesus is Lord. That Father God, everything about us will testify of your goodness, of your greatness, of your might, of your beauty, and of your splendor. We yield ourselves to you, Holy Spirit, and we ask you that you will lead us into all truths. Show us the Lordship of Jesus. Bring us into the place where we will understand that Jesus is Lord. Have your way, Holy Spirit. And it's in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Come on, church, where you are. Put your hands together for the Lord. Be excited to be in the presence of the Lord. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. Amen. Amen. How many of us are expectant of Jesus here tonight? You're expecting the Lord. I, 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 would, I, would, I would turn to your neighbor and say uh, congratulations. Come on, turn to your neighbor. Congratulate someone for something that's about to happen to them tonight. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, choir. And you may have your seat. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. How many of us love Jesus? No, I'm, I'm talking about people who really love Jesus. We're the... We're the Jesus lovers. We're the Jesus lovers. Amen. 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 Um, I'm going to get straight into it. I'm going to be very brief, very short, because we'd like to pray uh, a bit before we dismiss. I'm not sure if I have any reminders or announcements, but if there's any, please put them up. But as far as I remember, we have foundation class coming up this Sunday. Sorry, this Saturday. This Saturday, this coming Saturday is foundation class. Uh, for those of you who just joined the ministry um, and have never been a part of this foundation class, please do uh, be here on Saturday at 10 a.m. after the morning prayers. This is for those of you who have just recently joined the church, um, never been water baptized, never been baptized in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues, never attended one, um, and you'd like to be a part of the ministry, you're welcome to join us this Saturday at 10 10 a.m. Uh, please be reminded that on Monday, next week, Monday, we're starting with our seven-day fast. This is, this is compulsory for us. This is compulsory. Please, please, please be a partaker of this fast. We're starting at 6, or oh, rather, the last meal we'll be having will be on Sunday evening, and the next one will happen when we break our fast. Apostle will be here on Sunday to take, to give us for the directive on, on that. So please, I ask you, do partake of 
in that fast that is starting on Monday. Before I even get into it, I'd like to honor, acknowledge, and thank our spiritual father and our spiritual mother for this great opportunity that I've been granted to stand here and minister the word. Thank you, mom and dad. I really love you. I appreciate the honor to stand here and minister the word. Dad is in America, in Atlanta, with our spiritual mother. He'll be with us over the weekend. So just keep our spiritual mother and our spiritual father in your prayers whenever the situation or the moment permits. I acknowledge my fellow pastors, deacons, deaconesses, leaders, their spouses in the church at large. Amen. Luke chapter number 11, verse 14. Luke 11, verse 14. We all know that we are in a season where our spiritual father, as he says, leading up towards the conference, he largely delves around the theme and the topic of the conference, and he has started teaching us on dominion and the various elements and aspects. And last week, he started speaking on um, um, hindrances to, to, to dominion. If, if you were not here last week, I'd like to encourage you to go back to last week's teaching, please. Go back to last week Wednesday's teaching so that you can learn. And he had promised that next week when he comes back, he will continue on that. And because I didn't want to break away from the flow, I just wanted to stay there. There's a small element that I'd like for us to look into and pray and, and pray about. And it is strongholds that hinder dominion. There are strongholds that hinder dominion. I'm not going to look into many aspects. I'm not going to go far. It's just so that we can have an understanding how the enemy can introduce a stronghold that will hinder you from walking in dominion. You know, when you, when you, when you, when you are in a position or in a place of dominion, there are things that can hinder you from walking in that dominion. There are areas that the enemy, you know, <sighs> Holy Spirit, help me. Let's just start from here. Luke chapter 11, verse 14. The Bible says, Jesus was driving out a demon that was mute. Jesus Christ was driving out what? A demon that was mute. In other words, a person was deprived of the ability to receive. To, 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 to communicate or have speech because of a demon. So sometimes before you give a logical explanation to your issue, always probe if there's no demon behind it. Someone could have said this person was deaf and mute. But the Bible, as we learn, says Jesus Christ drives out a demon. So the barrenness, could be a demon probe find out and if you find out that it is drive it out don't negotiate with the demon never have a our generation we like to put too much theory and logic in the things that we go through that marital issue could be a demon address it and drive it a financial issue could be a demon address it and drive it Otherwise, this person, had that demon not been driven out, this person would have died deaf. Not because he was born with a disability, but he was, he was bound by a devil. When the demon left, the man ha who had been mute spoke, and the crowd was amazed. But some of them said, by Beelzebub, the prince of demons, is he driving out demons? Others tested him by asking for a sign from heaven. Jesus knew their what? Hallelujah, church. Hello, are we here? Jesus knew their what? Jesus knew their thoughts. Why? Because they were attributing the work of God to the devil. It says, any king... Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, any kingdom divided against itself will be ruined. And a house divided against itself will fall. If Satan is divided against himself, how can his kingdom stand? I say this because you claim that I drive out demons by Beelzebub. 
Now if I drive out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do your followers drive them out? So then, they will be your judges. But if I drive out demons by the finger of God, then the, devil, then the kingdom of God has come to you. Pause for a moment. Fascinating to understand that the coming of the kingdom is attributed by demons being driven out. So unless a, dream, a, a demon is driven out within your vicinity, always wonder if the kingdom of God is being advanced. We are here for kingdom advancement. And part of kingdom advancement is that demons must be driven out. Remember that demons belong to another kingdom. And kingdoms cannot coexist. So if there is the presence of another kingdom, that means another kingdom is not fully dominating. So when you see that poverty is plaguing your family, that means the kingdom of darkness has set up a, 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 a kingdom there that needs to be driven out. When you see peace reigning, that means the kingdom of God is there. There is what's called kingdom advancement. Every single person represents a kingdom. And the agenda that you carry will always represent or show the kingdom that you represent or you stand for. So you will see a person talking about something that is foreign to the kingdom of God. And, you, and this person will say, I'm a Christian. Christianity is not a Christianity matter. It is a kingdom matter. That is how you will have kingdoms who will tell you that it is okay for someone to be wed, for a pastor to wear two men. And they will say, I'm a Christian. It's love. Men can marry. Why? Because God is a God of love. No. According to the kingdom, a kingdom operates on rules, principles, and regulations. You don't negotiate a principle. Principles are non-negotiables. So because of the day that we are living in, we have Christians who want to bend them so that they can fit them. It does not work that way. It does not work that way. The principles of God are not for argument, they're for alignment. We do not argue the word of God, we align with it. So you will hear someone coming with clever arguments. No, we are not here for that. If the Bible says don't smoke, you don't smoke. It says that you don't cheat, you don't cheat. If the Bible says you don't do this, you don't do that. So us, we want to be smart. No, but when Paul was writing this, the Greek and the Hebrew, no Greek and Hebrew, when, do not sin, do not sin. Finish and clear. There's no fine print that you need to read in between and break. No. It's as is. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and he shall go and be joined with his wife and them two shall become one. Oh, in the beginning it was not so. The beginning, what was in the beginning? God created husband and wife, man and female. So today we are trying to put arguments together, stitch them, so that, so that, so that. And because of this, we do not see, we call ourselves Christians, but we are actually ad advancing an agenda that's not from the kingdom we, be, we claim to belong to. Our kingdom is a kingdom of light. And where there's light, there's no darkness. Where there's light, there's no confusion. Where there's light, there's order. We follow what the king says. We don't substitute, we don't mix. There is no place for mixture. What God says is final. And in actual fact, it is to your benefit that you obey what God says. Oh. <laughs> Bring ye all the time to the storehouse. If they might be, what? Food in my house. Test me now and see if I will not rebuke the devourer on your behalf. You see, because you argue tithe, it does not change the fact that a principality called a devourer will not 
fight you financially. It, it does, you can add as much arguments as you want. Do not sleep with a with a, with a person you're not married to. It will not change the fact, or it will not change. A spirit, a spiritual hu husband or wife will attack you. Oh. Spirits don't understand arguments; they understand alignment. When they see that this one is holy, they back away. They see, ah, this one is messing around; they're failing to align. Let's go. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Bazalwane, bazalwane. <laughs> the Bible says, when a strong man. <laughs> Verse 21, let's go back. When a strong man, fully armed, guards his house. His possessions are safe. A strong man guards his house, calling the life of a person, sometimes it's even believers, calling you the house or the property of a strong man. It says his possessions are safe. But when a stronger man attacks and overpowers him, he takes away the armor in which he trusted and divides up his plunder. I want us to go back a bit to verse 21. Just a bit. It says, when a strong man, fully armed, soldiers in the battlefield, not those ones who are waiting to hear the commander, the voice of the commander, but soldiers, actual soldiers, they don't go there in stilettos and make a bag for warfare. They don't go there in flip-flops and knickerbock. They go there armed for war. So the strong man means business. Which is why I don't understand why today's Christians are casual about the enemy. The enemy is never casual. And if you will be casual with him, you'll become a casualty. No, it's okay. You know, you have to understand. No, it's okay. You know, <laughs> just that. Not, <laughs> just small here and here. Uh, I, the Bible says drink, but don't get drunk. Wait. <laughs> okay, wait, wait, wait. Let's ask. You and I, before Jesus Christ washed us, we have a history of alcohol. Please tell me, sir, which barometer exists that tells you that you're about to get drunk. There's, there's, there's none. So you'll hear Mzalwan, a whole Christian, Barako Shakataka, after praying, will say, no, it's okay. Just take a little bit. Just don't get drunk. Where? Which, which barometer tells you, Hore, no, now you're about to get... <laughs> In fact, when you are tipsy, you want more. <laughs> So we will want to add arguments, want to become clever in our conversations, not realizing that in our wanting to start arguments and wanting to justify these things, what we do is that we open a door for the enemy. When we open this door, what then happens is that he comes in and he builds what's called a stronghold. The word stronghold is the word fortress or a wall of defense. A stronghold is not necessarily a demonic entity, but it is the result of demonic entities. Genesis chapter number 4 verse 1. The Bible tells us about Cain and Abel. Cain, the older brother, produces fruit from his vineyard or from the field. And his, and his brother Abel brings forth the best of his sacrifices. Next verse, verse 5. It says, on Cain God, but on Cain and his offering, God did not look with favor. So Cain was angry and his face was downcast. Next verse. 
Then the Lord says, why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? Next verse. If you do what is right, you will, will, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must overcome it. The word sin crouches at your door, when you study it in the original Hebrew, it gives us a, a, an imagery of a demon standing at the door waiting for you to open. Sin is crouching at your door and it has a desire. Just stop there. That sin has a desire. It stands at the door. It waits for an opportunity for you to lose sight and open. What God says to, Ab to, to Cain is that, but you must rule over it. So in other words, you need to determine what happens to sin. Because if you don't, sin will determine what happens to you. We behave like we have options. We behave like we have, we have the uh, luxury of sitting on the fence. We don't. Unfortunately or fortunately, we don't. Is it not God or Jesus who said, uh, uh, um, I wish you were hot or cold, but because you are neither, I spit you out. That being in the middle is not good for you. There's, there's no middle. There, there is no middle. You choose Elijah tells the prophets of Baal, tells the people of Israel before the prophets of Baal, if God be God, serve him. And he says, if Baal be Baal, serve him. He doesn't say, otherwise come to the middle. No. He says, choose a side. Choose a side. And sometimes choosing a side is not what you just say vocally, it's what you commit to from the heart. We have too many people, as God would say in the Bible, that many people have acknowledged me with their mouths, but their hearts are far from me. It's a hard commitment. So God tells Abe, uh, uh, Cain that sin has a desire. As it's standing there at the door, it has a desire, but you must rule over it. So now here's what happens. Cain then, does not listen to what God says. He then takes the bait of sin. And what then happens is that the enemy now enters. And because of him, there was a generation of brother killers that now lives because of him. This now becomes a normal activity that was introduced by a man who could not close the door on sin. Then future, when, 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 when time comes, then you have people who justify killing. No, it's okay. He's a murderer. Kill him. No, he's a this and that. Kill him. No, because of Cain, there was something that was introduced. People justifying death. People justifying murder. That's how you have thieves today. After robbing a person's house, instead of leaving, they'll want to torture and murder the person with no reason. And you ask the person, why? Why did you do that? Ah, oh, man, I... People will say, kill or be killed. Because of a man who opened the door to sin. Now we have what's called a stronghold. Now, here's what happens. I will kill you because of a logical explanation. So if this logical explanation did not exist, someone else would have not died. So when a demon enters, it creates a system within you or within a person so that whatever happens, he's always there.
There's the deliverance where that happens when a demon or a evil spirit is cast out from a person. Okay? And how do you ensure that that stays that way? Deliverance, that first, on that first level of deliverance, deliverance is twofold. You cast out the demon by casting in the word. So by just telling a demon to go out, if there's no word occupying the spirit man, the demon will come back. So you need to constantly ensure that the word is being cast in. Constantly. Expose yourself to the word. Messages, books, Bible, devotion, church. You don't skip. You ensure that your spirit man is constantly exposed to the word without failure. Because whenever there's no word fill, oh. Luke, Luke, Luke 20, 22. This just jumped into me. Luke 20, is it 22? I think it's 22. Luke 22. The festival of unleavened bread called the Passover was approaching. And the chief priests and the teachers of the law were looking for some way to get rid of Jesus for the people who have, for they were afraid of the people. Please read this on your own. One, two, go. Satan did what? If that door was closed, were you going to be able to enter? How did you enter? Door was opened. This is one of the 72 that healed the sick, that cast out demons, that raised the dead that opened blinded eyes, that allowed the new to speak. One of the 12 that did mir miracles opened the door. Hey. And Satan entered. Satan did what? Uh, a believer. For so close that at one point he put his hand in the same plate as Jesus. Held the finances of Jesus. This is how you understand why Paul says, I, I work my salvation with all fear and trembling. I, I work out my salvation with fear and trembling. That there must be a fear and trembling attached to the salvation. Otherwise, you open a door. Satan entered. Do you know why Satan entered? Because there was distance between Jesus and him. He allowed it. Whenever there's a distance between you and the word, best believe it's not long before the enemy comes in and takes over. Oh. You know, Satan is ruthless. Mm. He, is, he is ruthless. He is extremely ruthless. Do you know how, how far does his ruthlessness go? He can leave a man right in salvation. For 20 years, watching him do the miraculous, do great things, do massive explosive things. And towards the 21st year, introduces a wrong ideology. And then leaves him to run with his prophetic accuracy. Leaves him walking in the miraculous. Why? Because the, now this person carries a wrong ideology. Whoever, he, whoever follows him will follow him into destruction. So he unleashes you, then he leaves you onto the next target. That's why you watch what you eat. You watch where you eat. You watch who cooks for you. You eat from this pot here. I don't know what you're still looking for elsewhere any, out there. Not that there aren't any credible ones. But you watch your appetite. You vet what you eat out there with what's being fed here. Okay, is this, is this still in, in, in line in the principles and the values of the word of God? Yes, okay, then I will nibble here. But the enemy is that ruthless. Newsflash. Do you know when your appetites are not tamed, what the enemy does? He will watch and he will observe. And he will say, this person is not fully yielded to God. So here's what I will do. I will introduce hardship so strong. And just as he's about to 
He's about to give up. I will give him millions. Knowing that a married man with untamed desires, the moment he becomes a millionaire, his wife becomes an ugly thing. And then he goes for 20 other girls. And then he uses that money to abuse people. And then he leaves you. Knowing that I've given money to someone who's careless. Someone whose desires are not tamed. Someone who is, is, is still in love with the pleasures and the, and, and the passions of this world. A person who has, not been, who has not given themselves fully to God. Oh. Some people's spiritual attacks are not financial deprivation. It is financial, it is finances and access. Because he knows if your heart is not given to God, the moment you become a billionaire, God has lost a, a, a believer. Some other people, they think that your wife, can I say this? <laughs> Some people, They'll be praying for marriage. I bind and break. And guess what the enemy will do? He will bring the wrong partner. And because your ideology of marriage is not Ephesians chapter number 6, husbands love your wife, but it is Disney, you will wonder, why is it not happily ever after? Why am I struggling in my marriage? My husband doesn't love me. And the husband will say, no, and, 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 and. And by then you have three kids. And because of those kids and your warped imagination or warped knowledge of marriage, you will say, I divorce. You get divorced, guess what happens? Your children get hit by the effect of broken families. And that then now follows them for life. In their head, because it didn't work for mom and dad, it's not going to work for me. It's now a stronghold. Do you see how it graduates from one generation to another? That the wrong ideology and theology can introduce something that can give the enemy a platform to perform. So this is how we are careful to watch what we consume. How we consume it. And that is why I said at the start, the word of God is for alignment. Whatever it says, you do it. You don't argue at all. You do not argue. You, you, listen, you do it for yourself. You do it for who? Yourself. If you love yourself, you'll obey the word of God. If you don't love yourself, you'll try to find arguments and argue the word. If you love yourself, you will follow the word. It is to your advantage that you listen to the word. You hearken to the word. You live by the word. You, you cling onto the word with everything in you. Because it is only by the word that you'll be sustained. Oh. So deliverance is threefold. You cast out the demon and cast in the word. Number two happens where you walked out of trouble, where you've been brought out of a situation, where something deadly was coming. Devils were coming for your marriage, and you and your marriage come out. Coming for your finances, whatever it is, you come out. And the third one is where the mind needs to be renewed. Whether, be, whether you know it or not, believe it or not, there are Christians who believe that prosperity is demonic. Believers, tongue-talking believers, who pray in tongues for hours, who finish the Bible cover to cover. And the problem there is not really that prosperity is evil. It's just that they have a flawed understanding of prosperity. That if you were just to switch something a little bit, then they'll be in alignment with the Word of God. Have you never been in this? Oh. In actual fact, this will make sense to everyone here. If you've been, if you actually planted, this will make sense. How many of you are the same? This, you, 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 in your thinking, you, you are the same as you were when you came in here. 
If you are, please lift up your hand. Your thinking is still the same as it was when you stepped in here. Even someone who is a month old will know that something has changed. That is where another level of deliverance that we ignore that exists. We ignore, we, we're thinking it's all about come out demon. Sometimes if that ideology is not fixed, even if we cast out the demon, there is a structure that is existing that the enemy will look at you says, I don't have to do anything to this one. This one is as good as demonically oppressed, even though you're not demonically oppressed. You will be the one who will submit to things such as there were, there were times where holiness preachers were saying that uh, uh, to prove that you are after holiness, don't make money, don't earn money, just live in poverty so that people can know that you don't care about money. And because of that, there was a generation of believers who believed that money is evil. A few days ago, I brought up a post and I said, poverty is not a sign of humility. It is a potential sign that you're walking out of the will of God. And a person I used to work with about 10 years ago responded and he started, he, he said, he said, I can't remember what he said, but he put up a, he added a link and when I went to go read the link, he was putting scriptures together that don't, that don't come together. And in my statement, I had a scripture there. Third John, chapter number two. I wish that above all things that you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. I backed it up with a scripture. There's no argument there. The scripture is straight. It is straight. Then Daba is straight. I fully rule. Thank you, my brother. Straight. The issue is straight. I wish above all that you may prosper. That my desire above all things is that you may walk in prosperity. Then you'll find a Christian say, Now, here's where the issue is. For such a person, when they think prosperity, they're thinking cars, they're thinking houses, they're thinking many other things. My response to them was simple. You cannot advance the kingdom and be a blessing to humanity with an alien body and an empty pocket. Who can you bear less with an empty pocket? Who will you feed? How will you pray for the sick if you are still believing for healing? You're struggling with health. You're struggling with fun. How? A believer that's not walking in prosperity is just recycling the problems of the world. When you are called to pull out people from these issues, so when your mind is warped and you don't have an actual pure understanding of prosperity, you will reject the will of God for your life. You will walk to God and say, God, I don't want your will. It looks too carnal. God, your, 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 your will for me looks demonic. Because it, it, it involves a few millions in my bank account. It involves me healing the sick. It doesn't look like God. God, your will does not look like God. Such a person. The issue is not God. The issue is their understanding. So the enemy introduces these strongholds so that he can bind you and keep you in one place. I saw a TikTok of a girl walking a horse. All she did with her hands, no rope. She just did this around the horse. And then she walked and the horse started following. The horse has been conditioned to follow even when there's nothing. Oh, what's even worse? I saw another clip of a horse being pulled on a leash by a dog. So a dog was running, an animal leading an animal, blind leading the blind. So when there are these strongholds, whenever a person comes with another conversation, you will jump for it and say, yeah, this is it. This is it. Hey, yeah, why is he driving a Bentley? Yeah, why, why does he wear Dolce & Gabbana? Why, why does he have chains? Why is he, is he talking about the millions? That you, you don't, you, that's where you don't understand that the prosperity of the believer, believer is for the liberty of the world.
Strongholds must be broken. And some strongholds exist because we are married to them. It is the devil's fault that they exist, but they, it is the devil's fault that they were built, but it's our fault that they still stay. If we will not choose to cast them down ourselves, they will continue to persist. I said this to someone and they wanted to argue back and forth. I said, poor people don't need money. Uh, yeah, you want to argue with me. <laughs> poor people don't need money. Poor people need the gospel. Okay. Uh, let's, let's do Bible before. Hey, Pastor KG, what Papa? Look for <laughs> 16. <laughs> Look for 16. He went to Nazareth where he had been brought up on the synagogue day. He went into the synagogue as it was his custom. He stood up to read. The scroll of the prophet Azar was handed to him. And rolling it, he found the place where it was written. The spirit of the Lord is on me. Because he has anointed me to do what? Uh -uh, I can do, to do what? To give money to the poor. When Jesus Christ said to the disciples, the poor will always be among you. He was not talking about people who don't have finances. It is people who are resisting to yield to the gospel. Because it is only in the gospel where your mind will have a healthy understanding and desire for money. So when people refuse to yield to the gospel, even if a person can become a millionaire today, next week, he, he's broke. I blew it. Thank you, Dikonis. I blew it exists because of such people. A poor person will tell you, why did he spend so much on the land? A poor person, I, they probably exist. Why did he spend 16 million on this church and the land? Why didn't he give it to other poor people? Forgetting that here, poor people will come. Be empowered to become rich people to deliver more. I realize that we don't have an income issue. Poor, poor people who are poor don't have an income issue. Neither do they have a spending issue. They have a priority issue. They prioritize the wrong things. They prioritize the wrong things. You give someone 5,000 and their bills are 4,800. The one who spends it on their expenses, 4,800 and is left with 200, is far better than someone who earns 15,000 rand. Their expenses are 12,000 rand. They spend 14,000 elsewhere because they'll be under pressure. So this is where you see people don't have a problem with spending. They just have a problem with prioritizing the right things. We've seen them. When we were in Egypt, we used to drink with them. Their children don't have nappies. But great, they will drop it now. <laughs> they will drop a crate of Hennessy. Their child doesn't have nappies. Nepis near 300 and something. Just 300. They would rather go to the tavern. Such is a poor man. The income is there. And such a man, you don't give more money. Because they will commit more evil. Such people, you give the gospel. So that their minds may be changed. And have an understanding that I am not... Getting money to go please myself. I'm getting money to advance the kingdom. So God will see that this man can spend so much on my kingdom. Why will I hold back my millions? Oh, Apostle Felix, come. Here's more. Tell me if you need more. Don't worry. You need more. Don't worry. Uh, Pastor Victor is coming with another million. He will sow it. Don't worry. Tikhonis Nontlant is coming with another. I thank God that we live in a church 
where God makes these things simple and gives them for us as an example to see how these things operate. When we have a healthy understanding of how finances work, we will never complain about finances. No matter how much the need. Because we know that resources will constantly and always be met. So we don't complain about what's there and what's not there. We know that God will provide as long as we are faithful. Hey. You don't tithe for this church. You don't tithe for this church. You tithe for you. Tithe has a greater benefit for you than it does for this church. If you understood this, you will never hold back your tithe. That's how there are some people who have gone past 10%, have gone to 15, 20, 30, 50. Why? Because they understand, I am doing this to whom much is given, much is expected. It is required of a steward to prove themselves faithful. A faithful man will never argue with such issues. In actual fact, I wonder, you're still arguing tithe. My friend, me, the, I, I understand tithe because whenever I tithe, before I even drop my money, money's chasing after me. So the issue that lies is that people have an issue with strongholds. And a stronghold will never go down until you address it. Until you address it. You don't keep it and say, no, it will go away. It's like a muscle ache. The only way to address a muscle ache is to put pressure on it until it goes down. If you don't, it will stay there. So strongholds need to be actively dealt with. The best way that Paul describes a stronghold, we all know it, 2 Corinthians chapter number 10 from verse 3. And we will pray with this. How oh, y'all start praying in the Holy Ghost. We're going to pray in, a, in, a, in about a moment or so. Shaka brantele bekunda kibra sala shante skedevele kebaya. Whatever you do for the next few moments, don't lose focus. Just, just try and focus. It says, for though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. I said a stronghold is like a fortress. It is like back in the day when a king found land, he would build a long wall around it. And he would ensure that there is an army of people on the wall, watchmen, who would watch out for what anything is, uh, or any terror is coming for, 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 for the city. So he put up this wall and make sure that watchmen are, wa are watching on the wall to watch who's coming and opposing a threat. Should the coming kingdom come and fail to take down these people, they will go away. But the moment they succeed, the one of the things that they will have to do is that they will have to break down the door. Once they've broken down the door, they will go and enter and they will go to the king's palace so that they can dethrone this person, take him out, break down the stronghold and erect a new stronghold that says this stronghold now belongs to a new king. So when the strong man is there. He watches his positions. When the stronger man comes, he arrests and keeps him bound and scatters his goods. Why does he do that? So that as you are now the owner of this house, you will deal with some strongholds that will make it easy for the enemy to keep you under control, even though he's not controlling you. So that you can submit to poverty even though there's no spirit of poverty. So that you can submit. That's how you will hear apostles say, no matter what happens, I will never be broke. It is because I always wanted to. That, where, where, 
the, 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 the brave, the, 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 the king. Yours, my English, my dad, my, my, home <laughs> is giving. The liver. <laughs> hey, that's a bundles. The audacity to stand and say, I will never divorce. I will never be broke. Even if you take me and put me in the desert, I will still rip. I wondered, where does, where does it come from? Some pastors can't say that. <laughs> and that's why they will say Apostle Felix is bragging. He's not bragging. He's speaking what he knows, who he is. He's, he's fully persuaded. There's a full-on conviction that resides within him. That he knows that he knows that he knows that this thing is, I said that I had to analyze. I said, I want, you know, this, this, this brave audacity to say this, I, I want it. And God started telling me, now you have to deal with some strongholds. Just over a decade ago when I came into the church, I was one of those people on fire for God. But I didn't understand this prosperity thing. I would come to church and the moment they talk about prosperity, I would money again. Until God said to me, instead of arguing, go study the scriptures. And I sat down and I said, wait, if God is saying this to me, then there's something that I'm doing wrong. There's a flawed understanding that I have and I need to fix it. All God had to do was take me to 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. And though he was, especially in the Amplified, though he was very rich, he became very poor, that by his poverty, we may become very rich. Study it in the Amplified. I sat down for some time. I said, so the problem is not money. God said, yes, the problem is you. Fix your understanding. Because if you don't, if I give you money, you will abuse people when I'm giving it to you as a tool to liberate people. Or you are becoming, pro okay. Wrong scripture. Let's go back to 2 Corinthians. The weapons we fight with are not weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish. Please take note of that word. You demolish a stronghold. For those of you who were here when we were extending the building, the first extension and the second extension, you know how, much, how long it took us to break down the walls. That is what you need to do. Take a hammer, take a jackknife, take anything that you must in order for this wall to fall down. Something must break. Some breakthroughs are being held back because these strongholds are still standing. Break, breakthrough is standing at your door, waiting. Your husband is waiting at the door. Your wife, your contract, your destiny helper is waiting for you. Oh, some of you are cursing your destiny helpers for not coming. No, don't curse them. There is a stronghold that resides that if a destiny helper comes, you'll abuse it and you'll push away the will of God for your life. Strongholds must be demolished. Paul further, Paul further adds. Next verse. We demolish. What? He's not talking about spiritual entities. He's talking about things that dwell within the soul. That your spirit man is saved. But your soul is a blockage that refuses for your flesh to handle what God has deposited in your spirit, man. So we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. So how you demolish a stronghold? You look for any argument that tries to exalt itself above the knowledge of God. That the doctor will come and give you a diagnosis that you have a few months to live. As factual as it may be, there is a truth that resides that I wish above all things that you may be in health. And he was bruised for our iniquities. 
He was wounded for our transgressions. The chastisement of his peace was laid upon him and by his stripes we were healed. The stronghold that tolerates death and sickness resides. You will say the doctor's report is final and valid. So let me manage the sickness until death. But when you demolish the stronghold, you will embrace the truth that by his stripes I am healed. So be it cancer, be it HIV and AIDS, be it an, a, a, an issue of the blood, be it TB, whatever it is, there is a truth that resides that by his stripes I am healed. We demolish arguments with the truth of God. Anything that desires to exalt itself above the knowledge of God must come down. So you are going to stand up in a few minutes and you are going to pray. There are ideologies that you are holding on to. You are married to. There are people here who are not married not because they are attacked by demons. But they themselves had said I'm not fit for marriage. And they don't know that there's a demonic stronghold that needs to be broken. Oh, some of us came from broken families. My father left my mother when I was very young. And he wanted nothing to do with us. And he would come back in and out, in and, in, in and out, every now and then it pleased him. And when my mother dedicated me to God, he said to me, I want you to choose me or God. And I said, I don't care about you, I want God. And as I was growing, I realized some things. And just as I was about to get married, I said, God, how will I survive in marriage? I didn't see a father, I didn't see a mother together. He says, you don't need to see those things. Take off me and you will know. There's the word. I then needed to sit down. That's how I myself can stand here. And I say, I'd rather die than divorce my wife. Oh, I'd rather die. Because God gave me an understanding that marriage is not based off of Disney. Marriage is based off of Christ and the bride. Christ and the church. If you don't have that revelation, you will always flatter, you will always flirt with divorce. Oh, my marriage is going down. Where? If your marriage is going down, look up on the hills from where it's coming your help. Your help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. If your marriage is falling, look up to Jesus who is the author and the finish of your faith. Christ is the standard of all marriage. Husbands, love your wife. Not because she cooked pop. Not because she made your favorite meal. Husbands, love your wife as Christ loved the church. That he was even willing to die for her. Because of culture, I can't cook. My friend, your wife just came back from hospital. And you're expecting her to do seven colors. You're expecting her to do because of culture. I remember Pastor, Pastor Benji when Umam Sibi had an accident with her arm. We were talking the other day and, he, and he, this thing just sprung up to me when I, was, when I was studying. And he says, you know, I have to go home and cook. Some of you will say, aha, Baba Sibi. <laughs> Not understanding. If the Bible says, love your wife as Christ loved your church, that he was even willing to die. What was cooking? Gravy. Rice, salad. These are the strongholds that we've been born with, we grow up with. Yo, in the Damas, it's a stronghold that's developing. Oh. In the Damas. I almost had a clap back, but the Holy Spirit helped me. In that the must must be seen through the lens of wives submit yourselves to Christ. And you see, here's where, here's where you need to get it. There's no condition to loving your wife. No condition. It doesn't say love her because she did love her. Uh -uh. My business as a husband is to love my wife. That's it. 
whether she submits or not, that's where this demonic ideology of give me something to submit to is demonic. There's no something to submit to. If you're not submitted to Christ, that's the nonsense you believe and you'll run with. It will be a stronghold that will dwell within you that will cause you to abandon your marriage and crush it. Do you know the number of people who've gone and burnt down their marriages? Because of wrong ideologies. We cast down arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. The problem is that we are not submitting to Christ so we have nothing to present to God in obedience. Oh. Everything must be submitted and presented to Christ. We need to pray. Next verse, next verse. And we will be ready to punish every act of disobedience once your obedience is complete. Oh, many are walking in disobedience and they are wondering why demons are not submitting to them. Many are walking in half obedience and they are wondering why demons are not submitting to them. Partial obedience is not obedience. Husband, give your wife 5,000 rand for that weave. Ah, God, I'll give her 2.9. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. 5,000. <laughs> wife, if you're sitting with your husband, say 5,000. Turn to your husband, say 5,000. Five thou. Five score though. If you're not married, it's Bambi. It is until every man's obedience is complete that we have a ground to stand and walk in dominion problem you know when dad on good friday he taught us on the lordship of jesus go back and watch that for your own deliverance that the lordship of jesus is not a suggestion it is what he says and it is final you obey i have realized sometimes we don't need to fight with the devil sometimes sometimes i realized second corinthians 3 17 and the lord is the spirit and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is what? It is where the Spirit of the Lord, not your friend, yeah, not your chummy, your Lord, where He says, this is the final say, and you obey it. Oh. Do I have time to finish these points? Or should we just stand up and pray? Yeah, I think let's just stand up. Let me just give you these and you'll study them at home. Ways that strongholds thrive. Five ways. Please be quick if you're writing them down. Otherwise, please catch up with the sermon afterwards. I just want to give these five because I really need us to pray. Number one, wrong thinking patterns and an unrenewed mind. I don't know, the Bible says, do not conform to the standards of this world, but be renewed or be, be transformed in your spirit by in, in the renewing of your mind. So a transformed spirit needs a mind renewed so that what God deposits into your spirit, man, you are able to allow it to filter out into the flesh because the, the soul or the mind has been cleansed. The spiritual blessings that God has given us in heavenly places dwell in the spirit, man, and we need to allow them to find expression in the flesh, but a mind that is unrenewed will always block. So you need to get rid of wrong thinking patterns and ensure that your mind is always renewed. Whenever you're exposed to the word, ask God, what do you need to remove from, from me through this word? Jesus Christ says in, in John chapter 15 that you are clean because of the word. So the word is, is, the, is the system that God uses to cleanse us. If you are feeling heavy, don't run away from the word. Don't run away from the presence. Don't run away from God. Run to God and expose yourself to his word. Number two, being overweighed 
by sin. Being overweighed by sin. Genesis chapter 4, verse 1 to 7, we just read it. If you want to, you can also add Romans 6, verse 16 to 17. It tells you that you are a slave of what you choose to obey. So you are not enslaved because something stronger came. You are enslaved because you chose to submit to that thing. Number three, when you are being overweighed, being overweighed by guilt. Being overweighed by guilt. Matthew chapter 27 verse 1 to 5. We learn that after Judas Iscariot, after uh, betraying Jesus, in verse 5, we learn that he was feeling fully, he was very remorseful. You, when you analyze Peter and Judas, these sins may differ, but they all had the same system of grace. Judas could have just simply gone and asked for forgiveness. The same way Peter did. But because sin overweighed him, he chose to kill himself. Peter, when he felt that, he ran to the presence of God. So whenever you feel filthy, don't run away from the presence of God. Run to it. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are saved. Come boldly unto the throne of grace so that you may receive mercy and obtain favor in time of need. So when you're overweighed by these things, don't run away, run to. Run into. Make sure you are, because the reason why you make that mistake or you fall into that sin is because you missed or you walked out of recognizing the Lordship of God. So you easily followed the, the, the desires of the flesh. But instead of sitting there in condemnation, run. That's how you get rid of condemnation. You don't park things aside. You says, no, grace says, you know, you don't park. You come to the throne of grace. That's number three. Number four. Number four. Demonic interceptions. Matthew 13, verse 18 to 19. We learn the parable of the, of the, of the, of the seed. The sower was scattering seeds. And in verse 18, Jesus Christ uh, expanding and explaining what happened in, in verse 3. He says that when the, 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 the seed that fell on the, on the path were taken by what? By birds. That represents demonic entities that come and look for the word whenever it has been given to you. After studying this, I learned that we may all sit in church, but by the time we get there, the word is gone. I learned that. I realized. Why? Because we've given the enemy access. I've seen people, 10 minutes after sermon, after a powerful sermon, instead of them running to home with excitement to take the Bible and be like the Berean church, to read more and expand on what they learned, they walk in, oh man, my rent, oh, petrol, all of that. Some of us, we've been, oh, shalata kapaya. Oh, hey, I remember, I think it was in 2015. I was in a very, very terrible situation. And the word came, oh, the situation was looking at me in the eyes. And I had a choice. Do I complain or do I rejoice? I realized when pressure comes immediately after the word came, it is so that the word can be stolen from you. So you need to not give the enemy access to your heart. Even if they, even if they tell you that you are in trouble, big, big trouble, you, it is okay, it is well. In fact, what you need to do in that moment of bad news, go on your knees. I will worship you with all of my heart. You give him your praise. You give him your worship. You give him your adoration. In that moment, even if they come and say, hey, we are coming for your property. I will worship you. We're coming for your marriage with all of my soul. You keep on. You go on. Why in that moment, you are telling everything around you that God remains higher than anything under. So from then, demons will never attempt to sit, to come near you and try to rob you. They will never. Because they will see this one. <laughs> oh. Let's move on. Number five. A lack of of encounter with the word. A lack of encounter with the word. Ensure that you have an encounter with the word. We just read Luke chapter 4, verse, six to 19, verse 16 to 19, that the poor don't need money, the poor need the gospel. So if you know anyone who's struggling with finances, make sure they come to church. 
And if you know you're struggling with poverty, make sure you don't miss church. Make sure you are exposed to the word because, oh, shalabra brasantas katavalataya. In Luke chapter number 24, we learn of two on the road to Amos. While they were walking, when they got there, the Bible says, Jesus Christ took the bread. And when he broke it, their eyes opened to see him. And they said to one another, did not our hearts burn? as he spoke the word. The word is like fire. It will melt every situation that lingers in your life. So you just need an encounter with the word. Oh, Jeremiah chapter 20 verse 9. Jeremiah says, I want to hold it, but his word is like a fire. Shut up in my bones and I cannot contain it. So whenever you expose yourself to the word, what the word does, it will refine you and break off every single thing that the enemy wanted to land on top of you. He comes, He will baptize you in the Holy Ghost and fire. This is how you become a touch not my anointed one. Because you're so on fire. No matter how mad a maddened person may be, he will never go into open fire. So the devil knows that when your spirit is on fire, you're a touch not. Jesus Christ says, the enemy is coming and he has no hold over me. How can you hold on something that's on fire? Expose yourself to the word because the word is fire. The word is fire. Last three points. A little stand, we will stand onto our feet. How to break strongholds. Deal with the strong man. You have to deal with the strong man. Recognize the strong man in your marriage. Recognize the strong man in your finances. Recognize every strong man and deal with them. Number two. Walk with a stronger man. Make sure your relationship with Jesus is tight. Make sure that wherever he goes, you go. Whatever he says, you say. You are an embodiment of Christ. You release him everywhere you go. When the strong man sees the stronger man taking full residence of your life, he will never come there. Number three, pray in the Holy Ghost always. Stand to your feet, let us pray. I will says in Jude 1 verse 18, building up yourself in your most holy faith. You understand that the stronghold is a building of the devil. So once it has been demolished, you don't leave it un unbuilt. You need to rebuild something new. Something needs to be built. Something needs to be built. So Jude tells us, building up yourself in your most holy faith in your most holy faith by speaking in tongues. For the next two minutes, I need you to stand to your feet and open, blast up in tongues. As you are praying, the strongholds are being demolished. Strongholds are being demolished. Something new that is godly, that will help you carry the weight of the gospel is being built on the inside of you. Open your mouth. Shaka taka brata. Shataka bonta, she brasons of the veletaze, says he bracus and get a benenata, shaka branta, shoba brasa kila banda, shake a brantelike bakata, shake a kuta kapakatakata, shinta brantelike bereketaya. If you understand prayer, you need to know it's not about length, it's about intensity. Just focus on God, focus on Jesus. Place your eyes on Him and pray in the Holy Ghost. There are things that are being shifted on the inside of you. Plantings and buildings of the enemy that has kept you in one place. You've noticed cycles and patterns that after two years, misfortune comes and visits. That after two years, your finances go dry. Then after five years, your business crashes. Then after, after one year, your relationships break. These things need to be demolished. They need to go down. Every argument must be broken down. Every argument, argument must be dismantled. Shaka taka 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 taka. Oshkoto mera kataya. Shiki 
Tukupa kataka brakataya Jonzo Zumba Jonzo Zumba Jonzo Zumba Hermosense kivala kataya Merekiza Shaka takataya Bendekiza 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 ya Rushakata Bendekiro All strongholds must come down As you are praying The strong man is being evicted And every single one of his buildings is coming down His fortress is being demolished His fortress has been broken down Shake it on bar Brakatso tokopor Brakatakataya If you've written yourself from greatness That is a stronghold It must come down If you've written yourself off from marriage That's a stronghold That must come down If you've written yourself off from greatness That's a stronghold From marriage From becoming a millionaire That's a stronghold It must come down 30 more seconds 30 more seconds Shaka Bransa Shake Brataka Bakatanda Shopro Koto Obreka Takataya Kusa Ile Shaka Takata Shaka Takata Lika Soto Tombela La Tombela Lermisa Zavara Kazaya Second Corinthians chapter number two, verse 11. We are still praying. We are still praying. Shakataka Branta. There's so much deliverance going on. Ideologies are changing. The things of the enemy are breaking, are falling down. I don't know why I keep getting stuck on marriage even in my prayers. Shakatala. Best way to describe it is that your marriage is an ICU. I declare it's coming out of ICU. I declare it's getting discharged. God is delivering your, mess, your marriage out of trouble, turmoil, and chaos. Yeah, shalata kapaya. You're single and you've written yourself off from marriage. I declare by December 2024, you will be married in Jesus' mighty name. Let's start from verse 10. Anyone you forgive, I also forgive. And what I have forgiven, it is, it, if it was there to forgive, I have forgiven in the sight of Christ for your sake. In order, what Paul was simply saying was that there are people who are misbehaving. So that when they apologize and they are not overwhelmed with condemnation, they must be forgiven. Why? If they are not forgiven, what will happen? If this is not done, it will, what will happen is that in order that Satan may not outwit us, for we are not unaware of his schemes. Put it in the Amplified. It says, so that Satan will not have an advantage over us. So when there is a stronghold, the enemy will have an advantage even though he's not there. He will watch you force yourself and drive yourself to your destruction. I want us to pray. Every advantage that the enemy has had against us, we break it down. We demolish it now. We break it down. Come and open your mouth and demolish every advantage the enemy seeks to have against you. Shake it, take a brata. Come on, are you praying? Open your mouth and declare every advantage I break down, I demolish. The enemy will not have an advantage against me in my marriage, in my business, in my career, in my schooling life, on campus, on high school, in high school. Shatakota, Bendegivra, Zegiva. Shut 
Shagabranta, Shagabras and the Velacusa, Shebrasan de Juso, Shagabrata Capalo. Every advantage of the devil, we abolish it, we dismantle it, we declare the devil will not outwit us, he will not outsmart us, he will not have an advantage against us. We declare that we have the upper hand. We will not be a church in bondage. We will not be a church in prison. We will not be a church in captivity. All because of the ideologies and schemes of the devil. Shakataka Broto, Shelebraka Santa, Shigelekabanko Deperekataya, Shokosuku Suku Palakasaya. Second Corinthians chapter 4 verse 4 4 verse 4 The God of this world has blinded the unbelievers minds that they should not discern the truth preventing them from seeing the illumin illuminating light of the gospel of the glory of Christ the Messiah who is the image and the likeness of God. It is important for us to understand these things. Why? Because we have a conference coming. If you're like me, are you not tired of going from conference to conference and nothing changes? I realize that sometimes these things persist because of the wrong ideologies we've built. The structures we've kept that allows the enemy to operate even though he's not within. He can send offense from a distance and you will react. Why? Because there's a stronghold. During conference, that is the, the time where the enemy sends many attacks and the greatest that he sends immediately after conference is offense. You'll hear someone talk nonsense. I'm tired. No, no, no there's no time. It is the time where you have to push, push yourself and say, I'm going beyond. When you are driving and you get into a new gear, you don't remove your foot from the pedal. No. You press it so that you can receive speed and accelerate. So after every conference, instead of saying, I am tired. No, you accelerate and advance the kingdom of God. I want us to pray. In this conference, where we're going to be taught about dominion, the dominion mandate in the marketplace and in ministry, as we are going to be taught, whatever structure that existed, that the enemy allowed to persist because of veils, we are going to uproot so that when the word comes from day one till the last day, it will come and it will dwell. New structures are being built that will host the word of God. Where you are, I want us to pray, Lord, remove every veil that at this conference, no stronghold will persist. Remove every veil that as the gospel is being preached, I will receive and be receptive. Come on, open your, open your mouth and pray. We pray against every veil. We pray against every veil. We pray against every veil. Shahada, Shehito, Shehelepa, Zako, Kembera, Shibra Sanse Felekusa, Zebra Kasante Kuta, Sheka Brantelekapa, Bashantaya, Shabantelo, Elebra Sezekiva, Shante Brakuta, Bered and Deba. Bered and Deba, Bered and Deba. Every veil must be taken away. Every veil must be taken away. May every single person see the light of the gospel and receive the word of God. Shakatanda, Shakatabeloko, Rokno Kombre Sheke Brakataya, Shila Lilaya, Shibra Kasanta. The God of this world will not have the advantage of us. We declare every veil removed. Every veil removed. Ha, And lastly, I apologize for the time. I humbly apologize. We'll be done exactly 8.30. Lastly, 
Oh, Shayela Katabranta. Amen. I think some of you need to take these prayer points and tonight just open fire. Just, just go home and open fire. Some, some, some deliverances are personal. Yeah, they are on your own. When you are in your own secret place and you are guta, braka dokoto, sheke braka takata, you will see things fall off. Scales will fall off your eyes. Take these things. I strongly believe that this will follow you home. Hold on to it and run with it. Shatai. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 9. Jeremiah 1 verse 9. Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, I've put my words in your mouth. See today, I appoint you over nations and kingdoms to uproot and tear down, to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. This is the dominion mandate. You are called for dominion that you may do this. I want you to use your dominion mandate and go into every area addressing your life, your family, your workplace. Hela, hela, hela. There's no other way. If you are not dominating, you're being dominated. And you're not dominating humans, you're dominating spirits. So that boss you don't like, it's not them, it's the spirit that they're operating. So you need to address these spirits. God has sent you over nations and kings. Not so that you can eat strawberry and apples. It is so that you can uproot and tear down. So that you can destroy and overthrow, build and plant. Right now, for 30 seconds, I want you to uproot and demolish, build and plant. Uproot and tear down, destroy and overthrow. Go into every area that addresses your life. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Shakatai, Kebrata Gita. Barrenness in my family. I tear you down. I uproot you. I overthrow you. And I destroy you. I build and plant fruitfulness in my family, in my business, in my career. I declare that I will go beyond where everyone in my family and my surrounding is gone. I will break barriers. I will set standards. I will be the first to do fabulous things, great things, mighty things. Shakata brakata kabrato. Shile prasakata kabalakato. I tear down, uproot, destroy, and overthrow any demonic disadvantage that he has said and presented to me. And I declare a new order in my life as I build a plot. Shake a brack at a cabong. A cabro, Latina, Latina Bola. Rakataki Palakatakito. Shaleta Katakito. Sepramentes Catavelacoto. She Kataka Brante like a bar. As the stronghold of the force is broken, I instate. An order of healthy marriages. Shata bella kusa, berekita balakataya. As a stronghold that resides over single people who write themselves off for marriage, we declare healthy marriages in their lives. Raka bode, bode, borode, 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 raka sasa. Shaka tagi brata, shaka tagi bala kato, kati ko, grasa zika te bela kato, jale ke brasa kita. Lift up your hands to the Lord. Ah, shala takata ya, she kembrese se veleta ya. Lord Jesus, we want to say we thank you for every stronghold that has existed and resided in our minds and in our souls. As they've been cast out, 
and cast down as they've been demolished and destroyed we receive a new order of life we declare that every single thing in our lives submits to the obedience of Christ that nothing will take us away from the knowledge of God that as we stand right now we fully yield and submit to the order of God oh we will not be prisoners to culture we will not be prisoners to tradition we will not be prisoners to wrong ideologies ideologies that will hinder the word from finding expression in our lives we reject every argument that exalt itself above the knowledge of God we reject it every knowledge of poverty of barrenness we reject it now and we declare right now as we embrace the liberating truth of God's Word as conference as Excel 2024 comes we will embrace the tools of dominion that are coming for us we will not reject them we will embrace them and we will go into the marketplace we will go in our surrounding areas we will go everywhere and we will dominate oh, just for 10 seconds where you are just give God thanks just give God thanks give him thanks give him thanks give him thanks give him thanks We declared this year's conference that you came as one, you will leave as a thousand. You came as a small person, you will leave as a great nation. You will command things and they will obey to your command. They will listen to you. They will hear you. Even if you're a cleaner, you will draw the attention of a CEO. I declare you will draw the attention of the president. You will go in and you will take over and you will have dominion everywhere you go. Time is up. So if you have your offering, just come to the front and drop it on the altar. Just come, just come, just come, just come, just come drop your offering. It is blessed as you drop it. Father, we thank you for these gifts in our hands. We thank you, Father God, for the privilege that we are able to come and present gifts to you. Bless every hand that gives, Father God, with a good measure pressed down and shaken together. Running over may men give unto their bosoms. As they give, Father God, may gifts abound to their account. In Jesus' mighty name. And as we go home, Father God, we thank you that you will guard us, you will keep us, you will protect us and watch over us until we go home. You are blessed as you give and as you go home. Go home and walk in dominion. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Please be reminded that this Saturday is foundation class. Please be here. We will continue with foundation class immediately after morning prayers. As you go home.